near capacity crowd is expected today for this NFC Central Division battle between the playoff hopeful Chicago Bears and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And good afternoon, everyone. I'm James Brown. Well, it was just a month ago that Chicago's 3-5 and five record was proof positive they were indeed in the middle of a rebuilding year. But since then, the Bears have won four consecutive games, have improved to 7-5, and five, and now in a three-way tie in the NFC Central, folks are even whispering the word playoffs. My partner is Dennis Bird, and Dennis, to be quite candid about it, Chicago's offense has been NF. The defense has led the way. Can the Bears ride that defense to the playoffs? Well, James, they're going to have to. Offensively, the Chicago Bears, they're inexperienced. They haven't caught on to the system, and quite frankly, they don't have the talent to run that offensive scheme. That's being pretty candid about it. Well, Tampa Bay has been the NFL's perennial get-well card, a record of 3-9. and nine. Dennis, what can they realistically hope for? Well, James, Coach Sam White said coming into this football game, they can be spoilers. They know that they're not in the playoff race. They're going to try and knock the Chicago Bears off today. Be a great matchup. Very chilly conditions here in Tampa, Florida. As you take a look, that's got to be welcome news, though, for the Chicago Bears. The Bears have won the coin toss and will receive. And we're underway. Michael Eustad's kick. Curtis Conway from the six. Conway gets it up to about the 20 yard line so it'll be first and 10 for the Chicago Bears at their own 20. Jim Harbaugh at quarterback. Many people think very highly paid underachieving but quite candidly only okay talent level. Tackles. Alzine and Lewinberg, the guards, Borch and Wojciechowski. Running back Neil Anderson will get the start today, but Tim Worley should see quite a bit of action. First and ten, pro set. The handoff. And Anderson takes it ahead to about the 24-yard line. We'll call it the 25. We'll bring up a second and five for the Bears. The defense of the Bucks, a young team playing relatively well. Santana Dotson in up and down season. He's back on an up note now. Linebacking core Hardy Nickerson having himself a Pro Bowl type of season, leading the team with 160 tackles. And the secondary has Martin Mayhew and Ricky Reynolds, Jerry Gray, and Marty Carter, the safeties. Bernard Wilson and for Chidi Ahanatu at the nose tackle for the Bucks. Harbaugh back to pass. Complete to Ironhead Hayward. And Hayward looks to have the first down as he leans across and hits the ground in seriously hard fashion. And the Bears have the first. I tease with my good friend Hayward and take a look. What do you guess his weight is, Dennis? Oh, James, I think he's about 320 plus some change, I guarantee you. Hayward has definitely done some expanding since he's uh, gone to <laughs> Chicago. <laughs> It's amazing. We were taking a look at the uh, press notes early week. They had Hayward as 190 pounds, and that's even being gracious at 290. <laughs> First and 10 from the 30 on the ground. And Anderson ahead for about three. We'll bring up a second and seven. And Dennis, as we take a look at the opening drive for the Bears, really futility for both teams relative to opening possessions. James, they haven't had any touchdowns in the first drive. Both teams, Tampa and Chicago, very little productivity at all. Field goals, one apiece. You've got to be able to take that and establish in the football game, in this opening drive, your dominance over the other team. Neither team seems to be able to do that in the opening drive. This will be operative word, three points each for those squads. I guess that's uh, what each means. Harbaugh, the handoff to Anderson, and Anderson across the 35 to about the 36, we'll call it a three-yard game. Dennis, you had an opportunity to talk to Jim Harbaugh last night. Uh, what did you get from him in the way of his attitude and what he's hoping to accomplish today? You know, Jim Harbaugh still has a very good attitude coming into this football game. What they need to accomplish today uh, in that phone conversation with him last night, don't turn the football over. They realize that the defense is playing well. Go ahead and let the defense play well. Don't do anything on offense that's going to make you lose the football game. The big deal, offensively, don't give anything up. Third and five from the 36. Three receivers on the ground to Hayward. And Hayward pulling his way forward for the first down. The spot should be 
at the first down marker. We'll see. Interestingly, Hayward, and it looks like the spot may be about six inches shy, but Hayward, <clears throat> Hank Stram, one of our colleagues, has an interesting philosophy about getting Hayward to lose weight, just giving the ball a lot. He certainly is effective. Well, they talk about doing that early in the season, get him the ball a lot, let him just play himself into, the sh into shape. They don't. What Hank's talking about, he doesn't want him to be handicapped with trying to worry about losing his weight. Just let him play football. Dave Wanstead said what they want to do today with Craig Hayward, they're going to give him the ball six to eight times, let him carry it a little bit, see what kind of productivity they can get out of him because they know he's a very difficult kind of a guy to stop. And here is a guy, Craig Hayward. In fact, the spot, as you saw there, six inches shy. Hayward had to... Um, forfeit a hefty uh, paycheck, Dennis, because yeah. of his weight. Well, James, he had an incentive in his contract. If he came in at a specified weight, he would earn a $200,000 bonus. He didn't make the weight, and he had to forfeit the bonus. Courtney Hawkins back awaiting this star docking punt. And Hawkins fair catches it at about the 22, 1147. Left in the first quarter play. Opening possession for Tampa coming up. Sam White, head coach of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, as his team gets set for its opening possession. As we take a look at Dave Wants, that rookie head coach for the Chicago Bears, and getting an awful lot of votes, Dennis, for Coach of the Year honors. And rightfully so. Craig Erickson, second-year quarterback, will be at the helm for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Offensive line has Bruce Reimers back after two games out with an ankle injury. Dead last in the league running game, Reggie Cobb at only about 80% hoping to spark things today. Offensively, I think they'll open the game with a draw, James. And Dent got back. Reggie Cobb got nowhere, no gain on the play as Dante Jones Leads the way with the tackle. Dante Jones with 139 tackles leading the Chicago Bears. And boy, has he had himself a whale of a year at middle linebacker for the Bears. James Dante's playing fantastic in this defense. He lines up in here. He's the middle linebacker. And we'll get a chance to see him okay. in live action again, Dennis. Sam White known for moving things along quickly in the offensive end. Craig Erickson changing the call at the line of scrimmage. And Erickson hoping that he drew the Bears offside. Richard Dent was there first, but we'll find out whether or not Dent was drawn offside. Tom White, the referee. Off start. 82. Offense, five yards, still second down. Well, Craig Erickson was so good, he got his own man to create a problem. That's Ron Hall, the tight end, the defense of the Bears. Best defensive tackle tandem in the league right now, second best in terms of tackles. Linebacker, you heard me talk about Dante Jones having a Pro Bowl type year as well. And a secondary, Donnell Wolford, having himself a strong season. Drills it complete to Vince Workman, and Workman gets it up, regaining about five of the yards. Ball spotted at about the 28. John Mangum on the tackle for the Bears. The defensive front, James, already applying pressure there. Chris Zorch comes in, lays a hit on Erickson. That's something that the defensive front likes to get into. They like to lay the licks on that quarterback. As the game wears on, it takes its toll. And 10 for the Bucks. Three wide receivers. Erickson. Ooh. Nice defensive job done by Donnell Wolford as he knocked down the pass. And I just mentioned that Wolford having himself a solid season. Good indication James, of it. This is a great diving move by Donnell Wolford. He just gets in front of the ball, shows his athletic ability. Great job. Those kind of plays defensively is what's put Chicago and the Bears in this position to be going into the playoffs. They'll continue to do that today. Great, great job by Donnell Wolford. 
And it's Brzezinski's punt, 46 yards. Obi fair catches it. Three decades in the making. Downtown Tampa, metropolitan area of about 600,000 people, and inside, close to 60,000 expected here today for this contest between the Bears and the Bucks, and both teams have continued the season-long trend of not being productive on their respective opening drives. 9.57 left in the first quarter of play, and there's a flag before the play even gets started. No score here at Tampa Stadium. And that one might have been on Craig Hayward. Ball start, 85 offense. Moving prior to the snap, five yards, still first down. And Keith Jennings was the one caught. Craig Hayward was moving as well. <laughs> on first and 15, the pitch to Tim Worley. Takes it up to the 30, a gain of four. Coach Wanstead did tell us that Tim Worley would receive uh, quite a bit of playing time today in addition to Neil Anderson. Tim Worley's a running back. They want to get into the football game. He's coming in. He's just learning the system, newly arrived at the Bears. He's a very good football player. He's a north-south type runner, which means he doesn't head to the sidelines much. He takes a football, and he gets it upfield. He's very good at that. He's also a powerful runner. We're going to see a pair of powerful runners in that backfield with Craig Hayward and Tim Worley. Worley struggling, though, with turf toe that actually was sustained two years ago. And Worley ahead for maybe a couple. We've got Hardy Nickerson, the middle linebacker here. He's got 160 tackles so far in the season, playing very well. He makes the read, he knows where the ball's going, he sticks his head in there, makes a nice tackle. What Hardy Nickerson says about this 4-3 defense, he doesn't have to take on a lineman every play. In the traditional 3-4 that he played at Pittsburgh, that he had to do that all the time. On third and nine, Harbaugh throws it complete. And Terry Obi with very nice moves, giving the Bears a first down. And we'll see if they spot it at or beyond midfield. An 18-yard pass play. And Terry Obi getting the start today in place of the rookie Curtis Conway. And again, Dave Wanstead said, hey, this guy is making plays for us. Jay, that's a great job by Terry Obi. Watch what he does. After he catches the football, he turns up much like Jerry Rice, a very good runner after he catches the football. That's a key. Whenever you've got a wide receiver that can catch the football, get positive yards, you've got a winner. Left Marty Carter in his tracks out of the eye formation. Tim Worley will the tailback. Play action, flag on the play. And Harbaugh throws this one away. So there is a flag. The near side 50, we'll see what the call is by referee Tom White. And it's going to go against Chicago. Yeah, illegal motion, number 87. Penalty is declined. The result of the play is second down. There is no intentional grounding on that play since the quarterback was out of the pocket. And that was on Tom Waddle. This Chicago offense cannot afford to make a big play, great job, and then come back very next play and make mental mistakes. That's something that they have got to clear up. They're not talented enough to overcome mistakes like that. And thus the dead last ranking in the National Football League overall offensively. Harbaugh complete to about fumble. And Tampa Bay recovers. Keith Jennings had it. And the big tight end took a hit. And the ball was dislodged. Recovered by Marty Carter. And guess who knocks the ball out, James? Number 56, Hardy Nickerson. What a shot. Second fumble recovery for Nickerson. will make that Carter. Look at how he's excited. I love to see that. Watch Hardy. He's in the middle of the screen. He reads the play. Bam. Strips the ball out. There it goes. 
That's something that this Buccaneers defense can do today. Continue to do that. They have a better chance of winning this football game. And the pitch to Cobb is Cobb running hard, looking for an opening. A hard fought and hard gain, two yards on the play. Vincent Smith on the tackle, 7.30. Left in the first quarter play, no score here at Tampa Stadium. James Brown along with Dennis Bird and also helping Hardy Nickerson on that forced fumble was Jimmy Williams. And the Tampa Bay defensive coaching staff really likes Jimmy Williams, brings a lot of leadership and experience out there. Second and eight. Ball spotted at the 44. Three wide receivers for the Bucks. Erickson with time, drills it complete for the first down in Bear territory, caught by Horace Copeland, his 15th reception of the season. And the Bucks are on the drive, a 17-yard pass play from Erickson to Copeland. James Craig Erickson drops back, picks up his first read, which is Horace Copeland, the kid from University of Miami. Horace has been doing a very good job in this offense of getting open. He's emerging as the guy they're wanting to get the football to for the big play. Ball at the 38 of Chicago, 629 left in the first quarter play. Erickson audibly. On the ground again, and Cobb, good looking run as Cobb takes it down to about the 30. The Bucks need to get to the 28 of Chicago for the first down, an eight-yard run, and stopped by Vincent Smith. This is just a lead play with the fullback running into the B-gap. Reggie Cobb taking the ball back into the middle. What Reggie does in this offense, he runs, he makes his reads, and then he, he has the, the ability to cut that football back. On second and two, this is Cobb, has the first down, and a bunch more. Reggie Cobb, I mentioned at the top of the game, only about 80% was lost to the Bucks during the Atlanta victory. And that came six games into the season. And Cobb still not fully recovered, but says he can forget about it and go out and run hard. He certainly can, James. Tampa Bay ran the same play two times in a row. If they get on something that they like, they're going to continue to do it. If the Bears cannot adjust, they're just going to keep running the play. First and ten. Hopeless in motion for the Bucks. And Cobb, this time wrapped up in the backfield, a loss of about two. Steve McMichael in on that tackle as well. Tampa Bay ran the same play three times in a row. All they did on that last play was they flipped the formation over, put the strength to their, to their left, and, or to their right, and ran the exact same play just to the other side. And the lead tackle that time by Chris George. I mentioned Chris George and Steve McMichael's second leading defensive tackle tandem in the league. Second and 12. Erickson under pressure. Throws it complete to the sidelines and stepping out at about the 22, a pickup of three that time by Courtney Hawkins. Courtney Hawkins, a second year wide receiver out of Michigan State. And he's uh, got a little to celebrate today, birthday boy indeed. Sam White with the sugar huddle. Bears are prepared for this Sam White trick, if you will, in terms of not going to a regular huddle and staying alert defensively. Third and nine from the 22 of the Bears. To Workman. Nice lead block. And Workman runs out of bounds just inside the 20, a pickup of only two on the play. And the Buccaneers will go for the field goal as Michael Husted comes on. Vince Workman, a multi-talented back, formerly of the Green Bay Packers. You see Michael Husted's numbers on the season, his longest of 54, that coming against Minnesota. This will be a 38-yard attempt by Husted. Dan Skrzynski, the punter, holding. And the Buccaneers 
are off the board first. Tampa Bay leading Chicago with 331 left, three zip. Texas 31 left in the first quarter play. Tampa on top of the Bears, three zip. The first quarter has not been a very productive one this season for the Tampa Bay Bucks. A total of 16 points scored through 12 games. Let's take a look at Curtis Conway back deep for the Bears. And this one certainly will not be returned. As Conway downs it, it'll be first and 10 from the 20 for the Bears. And there's a late flag that was thrown at the far side 15, and it looked like some guys just having a little friendly discussion, Dennis. <laughs> Friendly, you're out there throwing, <laughs> throwing shots at each other. You can't hurt anybody. Friendly shots, right? Yeah, friendly <laughs> shot. And a personal foul is going to go against the Chicago Bears, so not a very good start for once that's Bears. It, it could be very easy for the Bears to self-destruct down here, James. Uh, penalties. the play is a touchback after the play was over personal foul unnecessary roughness number 37 in chicago that penalty will go from the 20 yard line to the 10 first down and that was on maurice douglas so we take a look at hugh culverhouse the owner of the tampa bay buccaneers one of the leaders in the nfl and Certainly a lot of prayers have been going up for Mr. Culverhouse, who is battling lung cancer and right now doing quite well. And we certainly wish him continued success. On the ground, the Bears enjoying some success on the ground on that run. Neil Anderson with a nine-yard burst will bring up a second and one. It's Coach Floyd Peters, the defensive coordinator for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Good guy. He's been running some really good defenses lately. He hasn't enjoyed the success that he's had with some of the other football clubs. He hasn't had the talent up front, as he calls them, the horses, but he's got some young guys that are really starting to bloom. He's had to do an awful lot of teaching, and uh, he relishes that as well. Second and one on the ground. And it looks like mm -hmm. enough for the first down for the Bears as Neil Anderson took the handoff again. So Dave wants that staying true to his word, Dennis, and alternating the running backs between Anderson and Worley. Five carries for 21 yards thus far for Neil Anderson. Dave Wanstead has implemented here in Chicago the platooning system, offensively and defensively. He likes to keep the guys fresh. At this point in the season, you're getting banged up. You've got some bruises. It's, it's hard to just play an entire game, and that kind of a system brings fresh guys in, rotates them, always keeps somebody in there that's healthy. Speaking of banged up, Neil Anderson is suffering with a bit of a back problem. We'll keep an eye on him. Pass intended for Terry Obie and went through his hands. Will be a second and 10 from the 21 for the Bears. Two minutes left in the first quarter of play. Ricky Reynolds right there on Obie. Dennis, again, you were being very candid at the top about the Chicago offense just not having the talent level to do the job. When you're, when you're in a situation like that, what do you do? Stay with the basics, on the ground, short passes? Then you have to stay with the basics. Tim. The, the running game is doing pretty well from so far in this football game. And that's Tim Worley doing pretty good so far on that run. Tim Worley running hard to the right for about a five-yard pickup. We'll call it six. Back to that offense, Coach Wanstead said Tom Waddle is, he has to be right now by necessity their go-to guy. Tom Waddle, his, his receiving style is a possession receiver. He's not the big play threat, the guy that goes downfield and scores a touchdown. Tom Waddle's a very good wide receiver, but he fits the possession mold. They need to get a guy in here at wide receiver that's the downfield threat. And a big play guy, of course, was Wendell Davis, who was out injured for the season. Decides to run it, has the first down. So Jim Harbaugh showing his good legs, if you will, as he runs for the first down. That's Jerry what, Gray on the stop. One of Jim Harbaugh's fortes is that he'll take the ball down and he'll run it. He's a very good runner when he gets into the open field. 
one of his criticisms is he'll drop back in the pocket. He'll make his first read. If it's not there, he'll run the ball instead of looking for a second or third read. He quite honestly hasn't had the time to drop back in the pocket this year I to get say. the football off. Offensive line has been the worst in the league in terms of allowing sacks. One sack per eight and a half pass plays. And on the ground, Tim Worley. You take a look at the clock down with 27 seconds left in the first quarter play in Tampa, leading it three to zip. Sam White's the master of inspiration, if you will, and boy, he's been tested to the limit with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers trying to find various ways to keep them fired up. What Sam White said yesterday coming into this football game, it's important to take away from the Bears what they've been winning football games with, and that's turnovers. Sam White told his team, if you can keep them from doing that, we got a chance to win this football game. And that's the end of the first quarter with the score. Tampa leading it by a field goal, 3-0 over the Chicago Bears. A chilly afternoon in Tampa, Florida, but great-looking shots here as we welcome Airship Shamu to today's game here on CBS. SeaWorld is the nation's premier marine life park featuring killer whales, sharks, penguins, and endangered species such as manatees and sea turtles. So welcome above. Second and seven for the Bears as we start the second quarter here at Tampa Stadium. Bears trailing three set. Worley. And Worley pushing hard to the left. See, we have another friendly discussion taking place uh, taking place out there. Hardy Nickerson under the pile in the middle of things. A gain of three by Worley. We'll bring up a third and four as the ball is spotted at the 39. Robert Green, the ex-Washington Redskin, comes in. Hardy Nickerson, one of the quietest guys off the field, but boy, does he undergo a change come game day. Wow, we're talking about a guy that really just gets excited and loves to play the game of football. You're looking at him, number 56, Hardy Nickerson for the Buccaneers. Loud out of necessity and aggressive on third and four. Harbaugh throws it incomplete. There's a flag thrown in the backfield. And you see Harbaugh grabbing a hold of that throwing wrist of his. Holding number 70, offense, penalty is declined, fourth down. That on second-year veteran Troy Alzine of California, so Chris Gardaki is on to punt from his own 25. <laughs> And back at his own 16, awaiting for the Bucks is Courtney Hawkins. Low snap. Gardaki does well to get it up, and it takes a Chicago bounce. And Hawkins takes a Chicago hit and is driven back by Maurice Douglas. A 45-yard punt. Nothing on the return. Scoring affair here at Tampa Stadium. 3-0. Bucks on top of Chicago. 13-58 left in the first half of play. And Tampa Bay will be starting deep in his own territory. Sam White saw Courtney Hawkins leveled by Maurice Douglas. A great looking special teams hit. First and 10 from the 15. Complete. as Vince Workman continuing to play well coming out of the backfield. And the good hustle that time provided by Joe King, 50-year player out of Oregon Tech. Second and five. Bucks from their own 20. 13-27 left in the first half of play. Tampa on top three zip. Out of the eye formation. Defense all on top of that one. Six carries for 16 yards for Cobb. As you take a look at the bare facts, 
The Chicago Bears have done a wonderful job this season in terms of limiting the opposition scoring-wise. And this is since 1949. Wow, only four times have they held the opponents to under 14 points a game. 1993 edition looking to become the fifth squad to do such. Erickson, strong shot complete for the first down to Horace Copeland. You know, interestingly, Dennis, none less than Lawrence Taylor himself indicated that he thought Craig Erickson had exactly what it took to be a very good quarterback in this league as we take a look at Richard Dent getting involved out there on the field and he's letting it be known that it's his side of the field. But Craig Erickson certainly has some boosters behind him. What do you think about him as a quarterback? Well, look at his arm strength right here. This is the thing that sets him apart from many quarterbacks. He throws that ball 30 yards out there into the flat off of a three-step drop. Very good arm strength, and he also has intangibles. He's a good leader, and he knows how to win football games. Six of seven for 37 yards on first and 10. Erickson. Drills it come wow. big gain across midfield. Courtney Hawkins hauled in that bullet thrown by Craig Erickson. 25-yard pass play. Craig Erickson did something that older quarterbacks usually reserve for themselves. Watch the play fake by Craig Erickson. He sets the football out there, right there, pulls the defense, tucks it in. He's holding the football. Now he finds a wide receiver, Courtney Hawkins, open down the middle. What made that play possible, what made it happen, is the play fake right there. That froze the defense, got the wide receiver open. Great job. He picked that up from Steve DeBerg, who was here earlier in the season. That, among other things, on first and ten, the handoff to Cobb. Cobb looking for a hole, the flag on the play. As Cobb maybe gains about a yard, did not fool Trace Armstrong that time. And Trace Armstrong is playing well this season. Trace is having a very good season. He's got nine and a half sacks on the year. Richard Dent has ten and a half. Between those two guys, they're really pinching the ends and forcing the pressure on the quarterback. Holding, 62 offense, 10 yards, the first down. That against Ian Beckles. You know, Dennis, coming into this contest, these were two of the least penalized ball clubs in the National Football League, and Already, Tom White has been pretty active thus far. Interestingly, though, although two of the least penalized ball clubs, it really doesn't translate very well to wins for most of the teams that you saw on that graphic. Yeah, you take, for instance, the Houston Oilers. They're one of the most penalized football teams, yet they've got a very good record. First and 20 on the ground, and Workman takes it back, regaining about four of those yards. Richard Dent. In on the tackle. Straight. Richard Dent, the 11th year defensive end, having himself a superb year. He said he didn't need to have an awful lot of selling done to him to convince him that Dave Wanstead had a very sound defensive system. He just wanted to know he was going to play a lot, even in a platoon system, and he's done that. He said he was already sold with this system by what Coach Watson had done with the Dallas Cowboys defense, and rightfully so. Second and 16, Erickson has the ball batted down. Great job by Joe Kane as he comes up with his second pass defense of the season. The unrestricted free agent from Seattle, the intended receiver that time was Vince Workman. You know, Dennis, one might expect the crowd to be a little quiet from the Tampa standpoint. They haven't had much to cheer about this year, but there are about 20,000 Chicago Bear fans here, and I guess in the early going, they haven't had much to cheer about either. Very quiet crowd indeed. They haven't had a lot to cheer about yet. Neither team has really gotten things going, but nonetheless is, was coming into this game to be a defensive battle. On third and 16, sack. Craig Erickson falls in the arms of Trace Armstrong, who now Cobb, the ball carrier. And Cobb across the 40, a gain of about five on a play, will bring up a second and five. And coming up now, we'll take you to New York and Greg Gumbel. 
right, JB, and we'll take you to the Superdome in New Orleans where Rams rookie running back Jerome Bettis is off to the races, 71 yards and a touchdown. This run puts him over 1,000 yards rushing for the season. It put the Rams up 10-7, but the Saints have tied it in the second quarter, JB. All right, Greg, Jerome Bettis, a guy who likes to punish the defensive players, but he can also display some speed, as we saw. On second and five here, a gain of only one as Chicago's defense was ready for that Reggie Cobb carry. Chicago's defense is doing what, Dennis, to adjust to the Sam White trickery? Well, what Chicago's doing up front, they're moving guys in and out. They're bringing guys to keep them in fresh. What they do is they're not huddling in a conventional defensive style huddle. They are turning and looking at the personnel that's coming into the game for Sam Watch and the formations. They can't afford to try and substitute people and get caught with too many men on the field and get a penalty. Third and three for the Bucks from the 43. And this is Workman, and Workman has the first down field into Chicago territory. Nine yards gained on the play by Workman. Tampa Bay doing a good job stretching this Bears defense out. Right, right here, a little misdirection, a little trap inside. Vince Workman does a good job finding the open lane and cutting into it and getting upfield. Vince Workman talking with Willie Pete, the running backs coach here at Tampa, who formerly was the running back coach at Green Bay. One at Workman here, and Workman is in fact here. 5.43, left and a half to play. Craig Erickson changing the play at the line of scrimmage. First and 10 from the 47. And Workman could not get the block. Gail Sean gets the sack. His first sack of the season. Sean Gale coming through with the sack. Tell you that's what makes the Chicago Bears defense so great. They've got guys coming all over the place. The defensive linemen are cutting it up. They're hitting every gap. Linebackers are coming. Sean Gale comes up from the safety position and just blows right through the gap. They don't have enough offensive linemen and personnel to pick him up, and he comes clean and gets a sack on Erickson. Craig Erickson didn't even have time to hit his hot receiver, James, on that blitz. Sean Gale came through so quick. The hot receiver is the wide receiver that Erickson needs to go to in a blitz. Flag on the play. Erickson complete. And out of bounds, Horace Copeland steps out at the 22 of Chicago. Now there is a flag back at the far side, 41. And it looks like it's going to go against Tampa. So that play comes back. Illegal formation, number 76. He's not on the line of scrimmage. Oh, man, two times. Scott Deal, now Five you heard. Yards, still second down. Scott Deal, the guilty culprit, and Erickson trying to argue his case. The offensive tackle, what the complaint is, the offensive tackle was lined up in the backfield. He needs to scoot up. He's got his head, the football right here, his head has got to be up here at the hip of the center at least, and he's not there. That's why they threw the flag. And the officials are really very mindful of that this season. I know the Washington Redskins, one of the guiltier teams with their formations last year not adhering to that second and 28 the result flags on the play erickson throws it complete and at the 45 of chicago charles wilson hauls it in we'll see what the call is here And it's going to go against Chicago. And it might have been Alonzo Spellman, the culprit that time for the Bears. Alonzo Spellman, a little early, wanting to get a good jump on the snap count, comes offsides and can't get back in time. Erickson has the ball snapped, and they catch Alonzo Spellman. Offsides, number 90 defense. That penalty is declined. Take the result of the play, third down. So Alonzo Spellman acquired 
In the first round, the 22nd player taken in the 1992 draft out of Ohio State, and Dave Wanstead really likes this young man a lot, although he doesn't like that mistake. So it's a third and eight. Ball at the 45 in Chicago, 4-12. Left in the first half of play. And Erickson slipping on the play. The intended receiver was Lamar Thomas. We see Lamar Thomas slip on this play here. He gets out, runs a good route, just loses his footing. It was not interference. By no stretch of the imagination there. Dan Straczynski on to punt for the Bucks. Terry Obi back for the Bears at his own 10. And Obi decides to let it go. And Tampa, wow. Curtis Buckley, who has had himself a sensational special teams season. Downs it at the one, a 44-yard punt and an excellent special teams play by Curtis Buckley. He doesn't even see the football. He actually hears the football hit the ground, picks it up, and does him a little dance. And he's got a lot to be excited about. First and 10 from the one, and Chicago keeps it on the ground as Worley goes for no gain on the play, so to be second and 10 from the one. Santana Dotson leading the way. Santana's defensive play has picked up the last several games, hit a bit of a slump, and was actually down on the bench by Floyd Peters as a result, but uh, you can see he's more enthusiastic now. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers have an opportunity to get some points out of this, get a safety. Slips and gets rid of it. No flag on the play. Will bring up a third and ten from the one. Keith Jennings was the intended receiver, and Tampa has to be licking his chops. Can you believe the Bucks have not had a safety in four years? So they've got an opportunity here. Jerry Fontenot stepping on Jim Harbaugh's foot here. Harbaugh almost falls down, has the presence of mind just to get rid of the football so he doesn't take the safety. Floyd Peters is ecstatic on the sidelines. Look at him. He knows he's got an opportunity to get some points, put some points on with the defensive unit. Trust me, they're going to come after him with this play. Third and ten from the one. Far ball with time. Complete. Ball comes loose. Down by contact. And incomplete. Tim Worley. The intended receiver, so Tampa Bay's defense does a wonderful job. Should come away with excellent field position. Great job by the defense. Fantastic. They've now put the offense in the, in the position to get some points. The question here is, did Worley catch the football? It appears that he does. Tim Worley has, he does have possession. Well, he's he gets definitely both got possession. Down. Yeah, the ball was stripped out. That should have been a fumble. And Gardaki low barely gets it away. Very incredible from the 41. Still on his feet. And there he goes. Tampa Bay. Ron Cox pushes Hawkins out of bounds. Inside the 10, a 40-yard punt, a 34-yard return. Wow, watch Courtney Hawkins. He's bouncing off people all over the football field. Makes a nice pirouette after the hit. Now he gets to the outside. He's, he's broken the containment, and it's nothing but green for him to run on. Great job by Courtney Hawkins. Courtney Hawkins has now become the number one punt returner in Tampa Bay Buccaneer history. He's broken 11 yards per punt return. Great Pre job. Previously held by Willie Drury, who now, of course, is with the Houston Oilers. And an excellent job. Give some credit also to Charles Wilson, who had a nice block for Hawkins. Now. First and goal at the seven for the Bucks. Mazio Royster in the backfield and the ball carrier inside the five. 
A pickup of three will bring up a second and goal from about the four. 237 left in the first half of play. Tampa trying to add to a 3 nothing lead. Both teams, full complement of timeouts remaining. Well, Dennis, you said again at the top of the game, you thought Tampa could be a dangerous ball club. What is it that you saw? I tell you, Tampa Bay comes into this game. They're hungry. Right now, the pressure's off of Tampa Bay. They're playing football just because they're having fun now. They've been eliminated from playoff contention, but they can bump the Chicago Bears out of the playoffs. Royster, the long back, and the ball carrier. Touchdown, Tampa Bay, Royster. Wow. Right at the heart of that Bears defense. Mayberry doing a nice job of clearing the way and Mazio Royster picks up his first rushing touchdown of the season. Houston comes on for the point after and it's good so Tampa Increasing its lead, and the Buccaneers, with only their fourth rushing touchdown all season, leading the Bears 2:03 left in a half by the score of 10 nothing. Tampa Bay run right at the heart of that Bears defense. Great job. A look behind the scenes as sports and science converge. Brought to you by AT&T. Injured athletes undergo many forms of rehabilitation. Now they're pro Sam White just said repeatedly throughout this season he is very high on and wants to give him more time. Well, we got an indication as to why. Two plays, seven yards. Royster with his first rushing touchdown. And as I mentioned before, only the fourth rushing touchdown all season for the Bucks. Who are on top 10 zip from the seven. And Conway is dropped inside the 20 at about the 18. Excellent hustle, guess by whom? Curtis Buckley. Running back Mazio Royster starts out and then just cuts back in the crease that Dante Jones leaves open for the touchdown. No one there. Great touchdown. Mazio Royster sees the hole and he just explodes through it. Very good job by Mazio with reading that. That's a read that Mazio Royster has to read. He's got to see that Dante Jones overflows and then he cuts the football back. Four wide receivers for the Bears. First and 10 from their own 19. Ball ball. Drills it complete as he finds Neil Anderson. And Anderson about a six yard pass play. We'll call it five based on the spot. We'll bring up a second in the fire from the 24. 130. Left and a half. Both teams, three timeouts remaining. Harbaugh back to Anderson again. Anderson is met and greeted by Hardy Nickerson. And no gain on the play as Hardy Nickerson read that one perfectly. Nickerson not upset at all as we have a timeout down on the field. About being here with the Bucks, we'll tell you why when we come back. Playing in this 4-3 defensive front, he's doing a very good job. He doesn't have to take quite the pounding from offensive linemen, but he's making more tackles. Adds another one there, bringing down the tight end. Only this one will be a first down for the Bears, as Harbaugh found Ryan Wetnight for the first down. 1-0-2 left in the half. Chicago trailing Tampa Bay 10 to nothing. Chicago called that last timeout, has two remaining. Ball. Low and of course incomplete intended receiver was Terry Obi. Will bring up a second and ten from the 34. Santana Dotson drawing the double team on that last play. A little bit of a scuffle after the play was going with Troy Ozine, the offensive tackle for the Bears. Santana Dotson, not a particularly big and strong guy, tall, good athletic build, but but not your typical type of a tackle. Uh, not really. He, what makes him such a good football player is he's very explosive. That, that's the one attribute that really sets him apart. Second and ten. Harbaugh finds Wet Knight. Wet Knight run out of bounds. He's going to be about four shy. 
And as a matter of fact, the official signals the clock should keep ticking. So, in fact, he was tackled inbounds. Ricky Reynolds on the tackle. And Chicago, as a result, will call a timeout, leaving it with one and trailing by ten. Still goal purposes for Butler. They need to get down to at least the 35-yard line to have a good chance of hitting the field goal. This is third and four. Hallball throws it complete. And the first down and a good run out of bounds by Robert Green, the ex-Washington Redskin player who Dave Wanstead said he was a guy he wanted for his special team purposes. Ball is spotted at the 46 of Chicago with 30 seconds left in the first half. Longest field goal this season for Kevin Butler, a 55-yard of that coming against the Vikings. Harbaugh throws it complete for the first down inside the 40 of Tampa Bay. Tom Waddle with the sure hands, a 16-yard pass play. 16 seconds and counting left in the first half. And Harbaugh stops the clock at 13 seconds remaining. What Chicago's got to do here, they've got 13 seconds left in the game. If they want to ensure the kick, they're, ne they're going to need to throw an out route. If they want to run that ball up in the middle, run the ball up there, see how many yards they can get, and immediately call timeout so Kevin Butler can come out and kick the field goal. And Chicago does have one more timeout left here in the first half of play. Tampa Bay leading 10-0. 13 seconds left in a half. And Chicago quickly calls its last time out of the half. Good pressure here. Harbaugh comes up. Chidi Ahanatu playing at nose guard comes up and gets the sack. Jim Harbaugh, the receivers weren't open. He started to take it up. Chidi Ahanatu spying on the quarterback. That means Chidi has got the quarterback. If he begins to run, he's got to come off those blocks and make the tackle. He does a good job here. So Chidi Ahanatu comes up with his second sack of the season. And Kevin Butler will come on and attempt a 55-yard field goal. That matches his season long, as I mentioned, against the Vikings. And it looks like Tampa Bay has called a timeout with five seconds remaining in the first half. And that will give Butler something to think about. Butler's career long as well as that 55 yarder. So Dave wants that will have a little bit of a task ahead of him at halftime in the locker room to try to get some life into this ball club. As you mentioned again, Dennis, going back to your point at the top of the game, the offense completely inept. They've got to find some way to generate some offense. That's exactly what Dave Wanstead was worried about coming into this football game. He's going to have to go in there now, and he's going to fire this football team up, and they've got to come out, and they've got to win this football game in the second half. Low snap. Butler's offering is good. So the Bears have a little something to feel good about at the end of the first half as Kevin Butler nails the field goal from 55 yards. Wow, that football actually curved back in to the uprights for the score, James. Maybe Butler knows a little something about the win that we don't. Apparently similar numbers and certainly nearly similar numbers on the yards. Jim Harbaugh will have to find some way to generate some offense if Chicago is to do anything here. The defense has not had an opportunity. First and 10 for the Bucks And Cobb 
maybe two yards for Cobb. Ball is spotted at the 23. Dante Jones, good first half for Jones. They call it a gain of only one, a second and nine. Greg Erickson back to pass with time and drills it complete at about the 29-yard line. Dave Moore, the backup tight end. Ty J. Armstrong would normally be the backup tight end in, but he is out with a knee injury. Last week, the Chicago defense was scoring points. That's something that they haven't been able to do this. The first, the first half, they didn't score anything. Last week's football game, they scored 21 points. That made up for the offense not scoring any points. So far, Tampa Bay hasn't even turned the ball over at all. Chicago defense, if they're going to carry them, they've got to get some turnovers, and the Bears' offense obviously has to show up. And on third down, Erickson trying to run for the first down, and he's going to be shy by about two, two and a half yards. Trace Armstrong, the man on the stop that time. So Trace Armstrong with a good defensive stop, keeping Tampa from picking up the first down, and Dan Straczynski will have to come on to punt it away. Straczynski has placed one already inside the 20. That will be a nearly a miracle feat here, given the yardage. Terry Obi back at about his 33. signals for the fair catch at the 30. Peter Tom Willis is going to come into the game and take over for Jim Harbaugh. Peter Tom Willis is the young kid from Florida State. Very good quarterback, young, just needs some experience. Unfortunately, this is not the type of game that a young quarterback wants to come in and have to perform well in. And again, from the pictures we've seen, we saw Harbaugh with the ice on that throwing wrist of his. And well, a way to report from the bench, so Peter Tom Willis will get the nod here in the second half. First and 10 from the 30. And the handoff goes nowhere as Tim Worley is ganged up by a horde of orange shirts. And Chicago looking to find something to get going offensively as we take a look at their first five possessions before the field goal and again not a good trend for the bears not a good trend james they've, they've got to score points we all know that but how are they going to score points they've got to get the football to the wide receivers now in this game they're trailing loss of one on the play second and 11 complete and tom waddle has enough for the first down so Tom Waddle is a guy that the offense has to look to, as you mentioned before, Dennis, out of necessity. Wendell Davis is not there. Curtis Conway, the rookie, is going to be a good one, but he's inexperienced, so Waddle has to provide the leadership. Waddle has to step up. He's got to be the go-to guy. What they mean when you hear people say go-to guy, he's the one that they're counting on to make the big plays. You have generally a possession receiver, which is the guy with great hands that usually gets you the first down, and the go-to guy to go downfield. Peter Tom Willis uncorking, looking for Obi, out of bounds. Terry Obi, the intended receiver, as Peter Tom Willis had to get rid of that one under pressure. Sean Price was literally at his feet. Terry Obi has the skills to be the go-to guy with the deep down the field. He just doesn't have that experience yet. He needs to get more game time. Christian in the backfield in motion for the Bears. Worley. And Worley, good second effort as he gets up about a yard shy of the first down marker. As he picks up eight, will bring up a third and two for the Bears. 11.35 left in the third quarter play. Chicago trailing Tampa Bay. 10-3. And if you're just tuning in, Peter Tom Willis in in relief of Jim Harbaugh. Harbaugh has a bruised right wrist. On third 
third and two. Worley, the ball carrier, and Worley, second effort, gets him the first down. Three yards, three hard-fought yards by Tim Worley. Martin Mayhew and others on the stop. Ten carries for 28 yards on the afternoon for Tim Worley. That's great second effort by Tim Worley. He's got the big blocking fullback, Craig Hayward, gets up in there, but Tim Worley bounces the ball to the outside, not necessarily where it was intended to go to begin with, but he gets out there and just shows good hard leg drive, keeps moving and gets the first down. Worley got a face foot of, uh, face pull, that is, of dirt. Neil Anderson on in place of Worley, out of the pro set, first and 10 from the 47 of Tampa. Anderson, and Anderson, good, strong run. So Chicago coming out here in the second half, very determined on the ground. In place of Jay Lewenberg, Keith Van Horn comes back into his old position, and he delivers a very good block right here to free it up to get the outside open. Gets down, gets a seal block on the linebacker. There's nobody to pursue, and Neil Anderson takes the ball around the outside. Nice game. Second and three from the 40, 950 left in the third. Bears trailing by seven. Peter Tom Willis going for the home run ball. Flag on the play as Martin Hay Mayhew comes up with the interception, but he may have interfered. Intended receiver was Terry Obie. It was Martin Mayhew and Jerry Gray in coverage, and we'll see what the call is. Pass interference, number 35 defense. First down and goal. So Martin Mayhew is the culprit. Chicago has the ball spotted at the one. It'll be first and goal from the one for the Bears. Mayhew and Obi. Mayhew just getting a little too much on Terry Obi. Bumping around, you can't do that. Not even when you're looking back at the ball. Wet night in motion. Anderson, the ball carrier. Touchdown, Chicago Bears. Fourth rushing touchdown of the season for Neil Anderson. Peter Tom Willis coming in and doing what Jim Harbaugh could not do in the first half. Good job. Maybe a little bit of revitalization with Peter Tom Willis coming into the game. Neil Anderson does a great job planting his feet and just going up over the top. Very much like Walter Payton used to do in his marquee over the top flights. Kevin Butler on for the point after. We've got a tie ball game with 9.37 left in the third. Left in the third as we take a look at the airship Shamu. How long is it, you ask? Nearly two-thirds the length of a football field and almost seven stories high. That's a pretty big ship to say the least. The stadium here seats 74,000, 60,000 expected. They've got a good ball game on their hands here. Wilson from the three for Tampa Bay. Across the 20, nailed at the 21. Ball is loose, but down by contact as Bob Christian leads the way with the special team tackle for the Chicago Bears. Next Saturday, doubleheader action coming your way here on CBS versus college football as Youngstown State will take on the Marshall Thundering Herd in Division I AA championship play. Then it's the NFL's turn to shine. Of course, the action gets underway with the NFL today, special time 3.30. Then it's time for the Cowboys to take center stage as they take on the Jets. That's all coming your way next week here on CBS. Saturday football. Erickson complete to Hawkins at the 28. Eight-yard pass play will bring up a second and two. You know, Chicago's offense came out after that, uh, after the halftime, and they must have really had a spark lit underneath them while they were in the, in the field house at, at halftime. I tell you, Coach Wanstead's got that kind of a spark, and I guarantee he told them that they need to get out here, they need to play football. And he's also got the respect of his players. Yes, he does. 8.55 left in the third. 
second and two from the 29. On the ground, Cobb has the first down. Reggie Cobb running hard as he picks up seven yards on the play. Joe Kane on the tackle. Reggie Cobb was very frustrated as he talked with us about how things were going so well for him in that Atlanta Falcon game, the seventh game of the season. He had rushed for about 75 yards before he went out with a knee injury in a third quarter of play. First and 10 from the 36. Erickson looking for Hawkins, intercepted. Donnell Wolford comes up with the pick for Chicago, and that is his second interception of the season. Donnell Wolford just plays this ball, good, goes up, catches the football at its highest point, just out jumps Courtney Hawkins and comes down with the football. They need those turnovers to win this football game. After that, Donnell Wolford interception. First and ten, Peter Tom Willis complete to Tom Waddle. First down, Chicago Bears. Here's once again the interception that gave the ball back to Chicago. Donnell Wolford here at the right side of the screen. He's playing the football. The ball is underthrown. All three guys have to go up. Donnell Wolford just wins the jump. And Dennis, much as you were saying before, how Tampa did not help Chicago by turning the ball over. First turnover and first pick of the afternoon. 17 on the season for Chicago. Chicago keeping the ball on the ground on that play. Tim Worley, the ball carrier. December has not been good to Chicago on the road. Chicago looking for its first road victory in the month of December since 1987. Dave wants that certainly had some words of encouragement at halftime, as you mentioned, Dennis, because this squad certainly has come out inspired. Peter Tom Willis at the helm for Chicago, second and seven. Oh, good defensive play by Ricky Reynolds, intended receiver was Freddie Banks. Ricky Reynolds just gets a good jump on the football. Almost nearly intercepts that football, and if he does, there's nobody in front of him. He's got 40 yards to go for the touchdown. Third and seven from the 27. Chicago five of nine on third down conversions. Make it six. Nope, gonna be shot. Terry Obi. Hauled it in, but a good, solid defensive play by the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. <laughs> Hawkins, back at his own 25. Gardaki, not a good one. And the ball is down at about the 44. So Tampa Bay will take over. Very good field position. The offensive line coach for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. His, buc his Buccaneer offensive line has been doing a good job of controlling the front four of the Chicago Bears. Bob Wiley was an assistant coach whenever I was playing at the New York Jets. A very good, very sharp coach that knows how to put his guys in a position exactly against defensive fronts like this. Tampa Bay at its own 45, first and 10, 549, left in the third, all tied at 10 apiece. Change of play. Erickson, back to pass. Throw 
throws it complete. The 45 of Chicago to Horace Copeland. Something that Erickson is doing right now that he was not doing earlier in the year is he's just playing football. Earlier, he was trying to make too many reads, coming to the offensive line, trying to make too many checks. He said now he's just more comfortable sitting back there. If he's not in the perfect play, well, he's just going to go ahead and call it anyways and let the personnel win instead of the play. Tampa Bay got the perfect spot, and it's first down, first and 10 from the 45 of Chicago. Dave Moore in motion. Play action, Erickson. Looking for Hawkins, has it complete for the first down at the 25 of Chicago. Mark Carrier on the tackle, a 21-yard pass play, Erickson to Hawkins. Once again, watch how the fake by Erickson on the run freezes everybody. It brings the linebackers up to the line of scrimmage. They all stopped there. Now they realize that, oh, no, we've got to get back out into our pass routes. But too late. Erickson's got the completion. Back to live action. Reggie Cobb, the ball carrier, a pickup. We'll see where they spot it. Looks like it might have been for no gain. Dante Jones on the stop. And indeed, no gain on the play, so it'll be second and ten as Vince Workman comes in replacing the tight end. Dave Moore. Vince Workman comes into this offensive formation. The tight end comes out. What that does is they can motion Workman out of the backfield and give them several offensive looks. Copeland to the near side. Hawkins to the top of the screen. Intended receiver was Hawkins. A little miscommunication there. Well, I guess the only thing you can say about these offensive rankings of Tampa Bay, not very good. And it's being uh, diplomatic. <laughs> back to Vince Workman in this backfield set. They bring him in, what he can do for them. He can move out of that backfield, out into a wide receiver set, and it makes it difficult on the defense. They don't have to substitute another running back or wide receiver. They just move Vince out. Third and ten, Tampa two of seven on third down conversions. Erickson overthrew the intended receiver, Courtney Hawkins. So Michael Husted will come on to punt. Jeremy Lincoln was in coverage. Michael Husted will attempt the field goal here to try to put Tampa back in front by three. This will be a 42-yard field goal attempt by Michael Husted. Krasinski, the holder. And right down the middle, so Tampa Bay with 348 left in a third. Back in front of the Bears, 13 to 10. Stop at the 30, so it'll be first and 10 for the Bears from their own 30. A little bit of razzle-dazzle. Dave wants that showing that he's not afraid to do a little bit of this. Just a little bit flashy, showing that he's not a conservative coach. He likes to do things that's going to put his team in the best position. A little reverse on a kickoff, a nice little change-up. First down. Out of bounds near midfield. 18-yard scamper. We've got more distance than that to travel to Greg Gumbel in New York. All right, JB, in New Orleans, the Saints continue to struggle. T.J. Rubley, 11-yard touchdown pass to Pat Carter. Extra point is blocked, but the Rams are on top of the Saints. 23-13 late in the third quarter. JB and Dennis, back to you. All right, Greg, and T.J. Ruby, another one of those backup quarterbacks who was really waiting for his opportunity, and this guy probably studies as much film as anybody. T.J. Ruby, a good quarterback, technically very sound. First and ten as Worley ahead for maybe three will bring up a second and seven, 13 carries. 
for Tim Worley. And he's picked up 53 yards on the ground. Neil Anderson in to replace Worley. Play action. Peter Tom Willis connects with Keith Jennings for the first down. Chicago with a little spice offensively, a nine-yard pass play, and Peter Tom Willis, who had played in only two games prior to today, coming on, and no matter what way you cut it, the offense is showing a little life with Peter Tom Willis at the helm. More spark. They've shown the willingness to go downfield with the long pass, which is something they haven't done much of at all with Jim Harbaugh. Peter Tom Willis obviously thought up to be the better deep ball thrower. Tom Waddle to the near side, Terry Obi to the far side. Bob Christian in motion. This is Anderson. Fumble! And it looks like the Buccaneers may have recovered. And they have. Jimmy Williams. The outside backer looks to have recovered for the Buccaneers. So with 156 left in the third and Tampa Bay up by three, 13-10, the Buccaneers have the ball at their own 40. Reggie Cobb taking up near the 45. Brings up a second and five for Tampa Bay. Reggie Cobb doing a good job of just lowering his head and getting the extra yards there, James. Five-yard carry. That's a nice job of him just knowing to get up in there, hit that seam, get the five yards. 125 left in the third. again first down inside the 45 11 yard run by Reggie Cobb stopped by Sean Gale 13 carries 47 yards on the afternoon for Reggie Cobb what they're wanting to do these offensive linemen are going to stretch the defensive line of the Chicago Bears out they want to get them moving get that movement Reggie Cobb is going to take the football then cut back inside look at that he finds the lane right there and he hits it that, is, that play is by design. From the 44 of Chicago on the ground. And Vince Workman, the ball carrier, ahead for about three. Will bring up a second and seven. This is classic offensive line play by Coach Bob Wiley there. He wants to get the, that defensive front stretched out. He wants to get them moving, get them going one way, get them to overflow is the principle, and then the running back cuts back. That's the ideal offensive running play for as aggressive a defense as the Chicago Bears are. Get them running, cut the ball back. Good play call. Well, at the end of the third stanza, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers nursing a three-point lead over the Chicago Bears, 13-10. Back for the final stanza after this. Look at the score by quarters. Tampa Bay leading at 13 to 10. And as you look at Sam White, Theo Adams, number 73 for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, when last you saw him was hobbling off the field, has a sprained right knee and will be out the rest of the ball game. Second and eight. For Tampa Bay, ball at the 42 of Chicago. Cobb. Reggie Cobb finally tackled by Vincent Smith. A pickup of five brings up a second and five. We'll make it a third and five. Tampa Bay is doing a good job of keeping the Chicago Bears defense off balance. They'll run traps, they run that counter, they get that Bears defense flowing, and then they'll cut the football back when they get them flowing. And then whenever the Bears think they settled in, got it fixed, 
Peter Tom Willis draws him in on the play fake and hits a long strike. Complete intended receiver. Was Courtney Hawkins and Jeremy Lincoln nearly had his fourth interception of the season. his own 10, awaiting the Dan Straczynski punt. And that one to the sidelines will be marked at about the 14. We'll return to Tampa Stadium after this message from your local station. You're watching the NFL on CBS. By. I guess we could call that a whale of a view coming to us from the airship Shamu. The blimp representing SeaWorld parks in the states of Florida, California, Ohio, and Texas. And we've got a pretty aerodite camera crew who uh, taught me some things about the animals we can see there as well. 14.08 left in the ball game. Bears trailing 13-10. Peter Tom Willis over the outstretched hand of Bob Christian. So far in the ball game, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers have done exactly what Sam Weiss wanted them to do. Come in, don't turn the ball over, and give them easy points. Now, they did throw the one long interception down here, but it was not in critical field position. They've done a good job of that, keeping the Bears in check. The Chicago Bears in the first half, really incapable of putting an offensive touchdown on the boards underneath the leadership of Jim Harbaugh, put a touchdown with Peter Tom Willis. On second down, this is Worley. Worley has the first down and dives to the 30. Tim Worley, excellent hustle by Tim Worley. 17-yard scamper, 14 carries. He's got 70 yards on the afternoon. Tim Worley does a real good job of getting to the corner. This play is designed to go outside. He peeks in here, draws the linebackers in a little bit, and then hits the play to the outside. Marty Carter. The injured player. Good job running the ball by Tim Worley. And you can smack me on the wrist for that. <laughs> Speaking over your replay. That's quite all right. That was Marty Carter, number 23 of the uh, Tampa Bay Buccaneers, who is very slow getting up off the field. First and 10 from the 30. Waddle in motion. Worley going one whale of a job. Worley runs for yet another first down. 81 yards on the afternoon. That one, 15 carries. The inside crease is done by the fullback who is in front of Worley, Craig Hayward. Watch him come out here, make a great block to set the inside up on the linebacker right there. Hit Jimmy Williams, great job. Tim Worley just picks his way upfield. Good job by Tim Worley with his vision, not only running, but seeing the hole and missing some tackles. So Good you job. call Craig Hayward a fullback, huh? Worley. Well, James, I think fullback is being a bit gracious. He's more, <laughs> he's more like an offensive guard lined up in the backfield. Hardy Nickerson was talking about Craig Ironhead Hayward. He said he went in motion one time at a bit of a slow jog and then stopped. And he said he was still jiggling when he stopped. <laughs> and he said he was laughing, but then he turned up at the snap of the ball, and Hardy said he just mauled someone. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sure Craig Hayward will uh, let us know what he feels after the game. <laughs> I'm sure he will. <laughs> Second and seven from the 43. Play action. Peter Tom Willis looking for the home run ball. Oh, what a great effort on the part of Terry Obie. Had to stretch out and just off of his fingertips. Wow, James, you see wide receivers so many times turn down the diving at that ball. Terry Obie showing that he's more than willing to give up his body to catch that football. This is just an extreme effort on Terry Obie's part. Look at that. Just laid out. Oh, oh wow. What the, a great effort. The ground in that case actually knocks the football out 
but he doesn't have possession of the football because he's got to have two feet on the ground. So technically, he didn't have possession of the football. Even though he had it in his hands, the ground knocked it out. That's an incomplete pass. Ricky Reynolds and Martin Mayhew sign a big sigh of relief on that one. Third and seven. Complete for the first down to Curtis Conway. The rookie out of USC comes on with a big catch. We mentioned at the top of the game, again, Curtis Conway, a good rookie, but an up-and-down year for him. Watch Curtis Conway. After he catches the ball, he takes a good shot and still watch his shot right there. Bang. But he breaks away, and he's still trying to get some extra yardage. That's a good job of Curtis just keeping his feet from that shot. First catch of the afternoon for Curtis Conway, 13 on the season. 11-23 left in the ball game. Flag stopping the play. Anderson, the ball carrier. Chicago in a three-way tie in the NFC Central with a record of 7-5. and five. Ball start, 78 offense. Moving prior to the snap, five yards to first down. That against Keith Van Horn. As we mentioned before, Jay Lewinberg left with a strained rib muscle out for the game. So Van Horn in place of Lewinberg. First penalty of the second half. 11-14 left in the ball game. First and 15 from midfield. Looking for Waddle. Incomplete, no flag on the play. Tom Waddle being defended that time by Martin Mayhew, and Mayhew was right there with the hit at the moment the ball arrived. This is getting exciting. The Chicago offense starting to do some, starting to move the ball offensively, but Tampa denying them, saying, no, we're not going to let you get down the football field. Great job of the Tampa Bay defense rising up to that occasion. Tom Waddle is one man who was very candid about missing Wendell Davis. He said he got a lot of action because Wendell Davis was, was getting double covered. If you take a look at Jim Harbaugh out of the game, they bruised the right hand. Second and 15 from midfield. Screen pass to Worley. Nothing doing. We'll bring up a third and 10 coming up for Chicago. Hardy Nickerson on the stop. And Dave wants that. Well, clearly, the pictures tell the story there. Right now, this point of the football game, this is getting to be one of the biggest plays of the game. Chicago needs to get this field goal, or they need to score a touchdown. It's becoming, this is a very critical point of the game for Chicago, and they know it. Third and ten. Six defensive backs in for the Bucks. Complete to Green. Robert Green needs to get to the 35. He's going to be shy of it about a yard. So the decision for Dave Wanstead, do you bring the punter out or do you go for it? No, I think Coach Wanstead is not going to go for the field goal. They're over there discussing it right now. But what he wants to do is put seven points on the board instead of three. This is a big call. This is the kind of a call that can go either way. It just depends on the kind of gutsy call that a coach makes, and it kind of comes from a gut feeling deep inside. If he's feeling at this point in the game that his offensive line can overpower that defensive line and get to the first down. Well, Butler has connected on a 55-yarder today. And there's a timeout called by Chicago, leaving it with two. Tampa has three remaining. right hand. Tim Worley has had a very strong afternoon on the ground with 84 yards. Peter Tom Willis in in relief of Harbaugh, 7 of 12 for 63 yards. And Dave Wanstead has decided not to go for the field goal nor to bring on the punter. He's going to go for it on fourth and one. Gutsy call. It is a gutsy call. And James, what you do, possibly you give the ball to the big guy, Craig Hayward, to just think that he can just take the ball across the line of scrimmage. Gutsy call. Fourth and one from the 36th of Tampa. Worley, the tailback in the eye, and the ball carrier. And Worley looks to be shy of the first down. Well, that spot, boy, from about three miles.
miles up as we are. <laughs> Looks <laughs> awfully close as it would from three miles high. <laughs> partner Dan Jickets was saved by the width of a mosquito's wrestling jacket. <laughs> Watch Marty Carter coming from the right-hand side of your screen. Right here. Marty Carter does a really good job. Watch this play. Just gets a hand in there and trips Tim Whirling. What a job. What a job. The Tampa Bay defense rising to the occasion. That was a big, big play for Chicago. They needed the first down. Gutsy call by Coach Wanstead, but the Tampa Bay defense denying them that first down. 9-17 left in the game. Tampa Bay on top, 13-10. On the ground, this is Cobb. Vincent Smith on the stop. Reggie Cobb picking up at least eight. He's got 61 yards on the afternoon on the ground. Chicago has not allowed a 100-yard game by an individual this season on the ground. Wow, Tampa Bay really playing tough against the Central Division opponents. They beat Minnesota. They beat the Lions, I tell you, playing great today. Second and one from the 45. Cobb has the first down. Reggie Cobb, well, if he's only 80% and running like that, maybe he ought to stay at that. You mentioned the victories by Tampa. Tampa, of course, in the bottom of the Central Division, but Chicago in a three-way tie and looking to try to stay in the playoff hunt with the must-win situation today, trailing 13-10 with 8-10 left in the ballgame. Still very much up in the air for the NFC Central Division title. Chicago, Green Bay, Minnesota still very much there, and Detroit, of course. First and 10 from the 48. Trips formation right. Now working back in the backfield. Incomplete intended receiver, Courtney Hawkins. The remaining games for Green Bay, Detroit, and Minnesota today at San Diego. Detroit at Phoenix, a game that they should win. Minnesota playing at Dallas. The team that's happy here is going to be the Detroit Lions. They, if the Chicago Bears lose, Green Bay's got a tough game against San Diego. Minnesota's got a tough game against Dallas. Right now, the Detroit Lions are the team that has a little bit to win right now and should be breathing a little sigh of relief. I if, Tampa Bay beats the I Bears. dare say that Detroit has a very tough game against Phoenix. On the ground, flag on the play, flag on the near side, and the reason I say that, not only Detroit without Barry Sanders and having fired Dan Henning, but most coaches say that Phoenix, one of the toughest teams to play. Offsides will go against Chicago. You know, all the little things last week that were falling in the Bears' favor are going against them this week. Offsides, 95 defense, lined up in the neutral zone, five yards, still second down. That being Richard Dent. You know, Sam Weiss told us that was something he was going to remind the officials of prior to the game was watching out for those neutral zone lineups, if you will. Yeah, the encroachment by the defensive line, they've been getting away a lot with being over the, uh, over the, over the football. Second and five from the 47 of Chicago. 7.20 left in the ball game. Workman. And Workman inside the 45. A pickup of about three. New Orleans closing the gap on the Rams. Chuck Knox was certainly hoping for a far better season, and that would be a nice plus if he is able to pull that out from the Rams' perspective. Boy, Philadelphia, wow. shutting out Buffalo. Ball is spotted at the 45, so it's a third and three. Eric 
Erickson. Erickson escapes trouble. Runs for the first down inside the 40. Dante Jones on the tackle. Craig Erickson had to put his feet into motion, and he ran for six yards to give Tampa a first down and to keep the clock moving. Coach Wanstead and the Bears said they needed to force Craig Erickson to run the football, get the pressure on him, force him out of the pocket. Craig does a good job here getting out of the pocket, just running for his life and getting for the first down. Richard Dent applied the pressure on Erickson, and Erickson escaped. Dave Wanstead, picture of frustration there, 554 and counting left in the ball game. Chicago trailing by three. First and ten for the Bucks from the fourth. Erickson. Out of bounds. Tampa Bay using some of that move out protection. They want to get Craig Erickson on the move. Get him away from that fierce pass rush by Chicago. You see the numbers on Erickson on the day, 12 of 21, 128 yards. He has missed, though, his last five. Chicago's defense has risen to the occasion quite often. Got a tough situation here. Kai on second and ten. Not much doing, maybe two yards. 5.30. Left in the ball game, Chicago trailing 13-10. You know what's got to be on Tampa Bay's mind is the fact that this Chicago defense can score on any given play. That's certainly a factor, and I'm sure that some of the play calling, they could worry about being conservative here from Tampa Bay's viewpoint. And this ball game still very much up in the air as Sam White looks on. Michael Houston hoping to maybe get the call his longest this season, a 54-yarder. and eight from the 37 and Craig Erickson calls for a timeout. Tampa with two timeouts remaining. Chicago with two remaining. Hi, Mercedes Benz. The American Express card. Don't leave home without it. Old duels from Anheuser-Busch. Premium beer taste without the alcohol. And by McDonald's. What you want is what you get at McDonald's today. Well, with 4.52 remaining in the contest, Tampa and the mascots a little bit to cheer about. Sam White knows better, though. A lot of time remaining. And the Bucks nursing only a three-point lead. It's a third and eight for Tampa Bay. And the ball is spotted at the 37 of Chicago. Copeland in motion. Workman, the ball carrier. And Workman diving up to within maybe about a yard and a half. Two yards. Ball is spotted at the 32. And Tampa needs to get to just inside the 30 for the first down. But instead, Michael Husted will come on to attempt the field goal. He's got two today. One a 38-yarder. The other a 42-yarder. This will be a 50-yard field goal, and as I mentioned, his longest this season, a 54-yarder against Minnesota. Skrzynski the holder. It's up. On its way. And no good. Chicago Bears still alive with four minutes remaining and trailing by three. Followed by the CBS Sunday movie Gypsy, starring Bette Midler. And it's all coming your way tonight right here on CBS. Four minutes left in the ball game. Chicago with its best starting field position in this, the second half. Ball at the 32. First and 10 for the Bears, who trail by three. Peter Tom Willis back to pass. Looking for Curtis Conway. Incomplete. Conway being defended by Martin Mayhew, and Jerry Gray was there to help as well. With Peter Tom Willis in the football game, 
the, the, James, the football game has taken on a different look. They're going downfield with the football. They feel confident with him just throwing the ball. What they're doing in there, they're running a little bit of running game, the power step, and then they're going deep. That's something they could not do with Jim Harbaugh. Peter Tom Willis came on for Jim Harbaugh, who injured his right hand in the first half. Peter Tom Willis has gone the way here in the second half, second and ten. From the 32. Complete to Bob Christian. And Christian tackled inbounds at the 35. A gain of three on that play, three-yard pass play. Marty Carter on the tackle. 335 and rolling down here at Tampa Stadium. Once again, another big third down for the Chicago Bears. And once again, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, they've got to rise to the occasion on defense. Both teams with two timeouts remaining. Third and seven. Chicago six of 12, third down conversions. Peter Tom Willis drills it complete to Terry Obie for the first down. Boy, what a bullet. What a bullet. That, I tell you what, he's got a tremendous arm there. Look at it. He just zipped that ball in there. Terry Obie is covered very well, but the ball is thrown good. The ball is thrown low and hard. It leaves that very tough for the defender to intercept that football. Peter Tom Willis, who did not play last week, and as I mentioned before, have played in only two games, had not, has not started this season at all. Only two attempts, one completion coming into today, but he's looking impressive today. Nine of 15, 77 yards. This on the ground to Worley. And Worley dropped. Nowhere to run. Jimmy Williams leading the way. A loss of about six on the play. I'll tell you, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers defense refusing to give up. Watch him swarm to the football on the left side of your screen. Nowhere for Worley to go. Ball is spotted at the 41, a loss of four, and this will take us down to the two-minute warning. Two-minute mark of the ball game. Chicago trailing Tampa Bay 13 to 10. to Robert Green, and Robert Green gets it up near midfield. Third and six, Chicago needs to get to the 44 for a first down. Incomplete wow. intended receiver Terry Obi, Martin Mayhew breaks it up. Chicago's going to go for this next play again. Fourth down. Once again, gutsy play calling by Coach Wanstead. 137 left in the game. Chicago with a four-game win streak on the line here. Wanstead definitely playing aggressive. He knows that this is a critical situation for this football team. They're going to throw the ball again. It's up to Peter Tom Willis. Super defensive wow. play by Roger Jones. Wow. Well, I tell you what, James, the play calling. I know the coach is aggressive, but throw the football where you can get the first down. Pass the marker. That wasn't even close to pass the marker. He still had five yards to go. Watch the pass. Out into the left flat. It's a great throw. Wonderful throw. But that's not the distance you needed to get to. You've got to be beyond the sticks. Now, suppose that was the second option chosen that time by Peter Tom Willis instead. Definitely not. That was his first option round. All right. Definitely. He dropped back, and he hit it. 130 left in the ball game. Tampa Bay Buccaneers with the ball. First and 10 on the ground. No gain on the play. Reggie Cobb taking it back to the line of scrimmage. I guarantee a recurring thought, almost a nightmare thought, is how the Chicago defense can score at any minute. That's got to be something going on. Added pressure to Craig Erickson, the quarterback, and I assure you, Sam White's the same thing is going on in his mind. As a matter of fact, he calls a young quarterback to the sidelines to converse with him about exactly what they need to do. Don't 
turn the football over to the Bears. Chicago Bears have called a timeout, leaving the Bears with one. Tampa has two. Playing into the hands of the Tampa Bay offense, what they've been doing well today is running the football, stretching the defense out. At this point, with a minute 23 seconds left in the game, that seems to be the logical choice. The running game eats up the clock. Your running game has been working, so stick with it. This game is presented by authority of the National Football League, and the CBS telecast is intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast without the express written consent of the NFL, Tampa Bay is prohibited. On second down, the boot, Craig Erickson. As he picks up two yards on the play, and Chicago burns off its final timeout with 1.15. Left in the ball game and trailing by three. Today's game was produced by Bob Monsbach and directed by Kathy Barreto. The coordinating producer of the NFL today is Eric Mann, directed by Larry Cavalina. The senior producer of the NFL on CBS is Ed Gorin, and the executive in charge of production is Rick Gentile. Special thanks to Gary Lynn, Steve Kleinfeld, Deb Gelman, David Strump, and Richard Drake. Now we're into talking strategy, James. What the Tampa Bay Buccaneers need to do, they need to get a first down. That's what they would be comfortable with. A minute, 15 seconds left. The Chicago Bears have burned their last time out. Tampa Bay needs to get a first down, and they've got to go nine and a half yards to get it. If not, they've got to punt it and hope that their defense can stymie that offense one last time to win the football game. They might have to put the, the win on the shoulders of this defense. It'll be a third and ten for Tampa Bay. Ball at midfield. And you know that's appropriate because Craig Erickson actually gave himself up sliding, but it's not where. When he slid and gave himself right. up, it looked as if he had picked up a couple of yards, right. but not, not true. Ball at midfield, third and ten. Working in motion. Flag on the play. Play game, offense, five yards, the third down. One fifteen left in the contest. What I was trying to spit out to you then is when Craig Erickson gave himself up is, is where his feet are when the ball hits the ground, and that was still at midfield. That's correct. Third and 15. Cobb. Nowhere. Trace Armstrong wraps him up. Dave wants that team with no timeouts remaining. Tampa with Tampa plays take all kinds of time here. That's right. Tampa Bay is going to play this smart, punt the ball off. Chicago is going to get the football with somewhere in the neighborhood of 25 seconds left to play. Ten seconds left on the 40-second clock. That's a smart play and by Tampa. the Buccaneers. Tampa calls a timeout. There you go. That's smart. Leaving it with one. Bleeding every second off of that, off of the uh, final game clock. 26 seconds remaining. The Tampa Bay Bucks with one timeout remaining. Chicago with none. And the Bears with a four-game win streak on the line, trailing 13 to 10. Well, Peter Tom Willis came on in relief for Dave Wanstead's Bears in the second half and put some spark into an otherwise inept offense. Will it be enough?
play. Obi fair caught it at the 19. But will it be roughing the kicker? Dan Straczynski went down and a flag right at the spot of the punt. Now the question here is will it be 15 yards or five? Well, what it really depends on, was the defender pushed into the punter or did he just run into him? It's gonna be 15 yards. 15 yards and a first down for Tampa Bay. still has his microphone turned on at the wrong time. Here it is, Ron Cox, 54, right up the middle. Just lays Straczynski out. That's going to cost him. That'll be that it. That'll be it. So Tampa Bay, as you mentioned at the top of the game, Dennis Bird, a dangerous ball club. So much so that they end the four-game win streak of the Chicago Bears. The Bears came into the afternoon in a three-way tie with a record of 7-5, and five, now fall to 7-6, and six, while the Buccaneers improve to 4-9. and nine. So as you take a look now, Chicago has dropped down. Detroit and Green Bay right now with a record of 7-5. and five. And Minnesota playing Dallas. So for Dennis Bird, I'm James Brown saying so long from Tampa Stadium with a final score. Tampa Bay wins it 13 to 10. Coming up next, it's the NFL Today postgame report where Greg and Terry will have all the scores and highlights from today's NFL actions.